you'll never find the more wretched hive of scum and villainy. We must be cautious. Hey guys, it's Steph. Welcome back to the Cantina. Please remember to tip the Wookiee bartenders 20%. No droids and bounty hunters, no Ray Lowe's, no Ray Nobody's, no Ray Palpatine, no Disney canon fans. <laughs> they don't have a canon. They've admitted it. No Disney fans of any kind. Um, you know the rules. Wookiee bartenders get 20%. No, you know, uh, you break it, you brought it, you bought it. There you go. I am your Wookiee Wrangler, your Chaos Coordinator, your Scoundrel Coordinator. I'm Steph. Anyway. We'll talk about, about a little bit about something that I have been kind of immersed in right now since all this bullshit rioting and white people are supposed to feel bad about being white. You know, that shit is going on. Um, I want to talk a little bit about something that has kind of piqued my interest. Watched all three Godfather movies, yes, even Godfather 3, which despite... Sofia Coppola oh, wasn't really that bad. I mean, I think the person that really just shocked the shit out of me was uh, Talia Shire as uh, Connie at the end. Sleep God for the... I'm like... Holy fuck. You know, uh, what she did, if you haven't seen the movie, uh, watch at least get to the scene at the... And where Eli Wallach is eating a cannoli watching the uh, opera. That whole thing. Um, and if you don't think women are capable of killing, you don't know shit about women. Okay. Um, because Francis Ford Coppola was very insistent. There you go. It was freaky. Anyway, uh... And then I watched Goodfellas. I watched A Bronx Tale, which I really, really liked. But I really think it would have been almost better if somebody like Martin Scorsese had directed it instead of Robert De Niro. Um, kind of questionable camera work, but the story was really good. The acting was great. Chaz Palminteri wrote it, directed it, or wrote it, and was the star of it. And he was amazing. I mean, amazing. Um... Robert De Niro definitely got outacted in this, in this movie. Uh, and it's a movie I suggest y'all watch. And I watched the HBO 1996 version of Gotti. Uh, Michael Franzese, who's probably the, the, one of the biggest, highest ranking mobsters ever to um, go legit. Uh, he spent, I think, eight years in prison. Um, he was a high-ranking member member of the Colombo family in uh, New York, um, and he basically said it's probably the closest to reality for a a movie about the mob, and it stars Armand Desante, Anthony Quinn. It's it's really really good. Um, it kind of skips over. Uh, Gotti's family, Gotti didn't have one child. He had several with his wife. But a very interesting movie. Um, y you know, you gotta start watching it. But I thought, you know, Star Wars has gangsters, right? Jabba the Hutt, uh, Prince Izor, and the Black Sun. But they don't have gangsters like these guys. Um, these guys weren't the kind to send bounty hunters out. They had uh, their soldiers who had associates who would go out and take care of a problem. And the only way a guy would get clipped in Gotti's terms or hit is there had to be an agreement. The boss had to agree t to, to this. He had to give the commander say, okay, fine. This guy's done, you know, uh, clip, clip him. There's no one like that. So as you know, I'm, I'm working on a, uh, a fiction about Han and Luke looking for an informant that went off the map uh, for Mon Mothma 
and the Rebel Alliance before the Imperials get this guy. And I, I've got to the point after watching these shows and thinking about it, we really do need to have uh, sort of a, 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 a La Cosa Nostra kind of element to that underworld that sort of is even a lower under the radar than Jabba. I mean, hut space. I mean, Jabba the Hut might as well be the hut version, well-dressed version of hut John Gotti, okay? Uh, these guys, you know, when I was thinking about this, I don't want these guys to be like on everybody's tongues. These are people that they do a lot of business, but nobody seems to know anything about them, uh, which is what back in the old days when uh, Lucky Luciano basically created the five families and created the commission. It was very, very, you know, they called the mafia in Sicily the Black Hand or you know, they're invisible. That was the way people like Carlo Gambino and even, you know, people like Albert Anastasia, I mean, people knew who they were, but they themselves didn't make it apparent. They didn't want to be known. Um, uh, Paul Castellano, who was gunned down in 85 or 87 by uh, Gotti's guy so they could take over running the Gambino family. Um, he hated the notoriety. Uh, he was actually semi-legit um, if in the, in, in the way we understand that word. And he was very anti, put yourself out there, wear these you know $2,000 suits, la la la. Now his house on Staten Island was a movie star's house. It was huge. It was gorgeous, indoor pool and everything. But the way he dressed was not to draw attention. Okay. John Gotti, on the other hand, lived on a quiet street. Okay. And in Queens. But the way he dressed, the way he was, he was out in the open where everybody could see him and everybody knew who he was. Okay. What I'm doing is I'm trying to create a part of Star Wars and that underworld that Han Solo knows, uh, he understands their ideas of respect. They leave him alone, he leaves them alone. If he does work, it's cut and dried, there you go, sayonara. Uh, you know where to find me if you need me again, but don't ask me to be any more important than, than a delivery boy or a, you know, somebody like that. I'm not, I don't want to be part of this. Um, Han's already got enough trouble with Java. All right, but I'm gonna add this to it because I really think there's a certain thing that's missing there. We've got the Wild West, we've got Tatooine, we've got all that shit going down. But Jabba is sort of like this cartoon version of Al Capone, all right? I don't want these, what I'm doing is I'm gonna add somebody who Maybe is as powerful or maybe more, but not everybody knows who he is. He's not on everybody's radar. And he's got hundreds, maybe thousands of people underneath him in his enterprise. He makes, I mean, Dryden Voss and Darth Maul look like a, a cartoon, very, very serious guy. And he doesn't hire bounty hunters. He has enough people that if he needs someone whacked, he does it himself. So what do you guys think? Let me know. I'm gonna, I'll put a link into it, my latest on this video. You guys tell me what you think. And uh, it is called Fate of the Alliance at cowscentral.com. You guys will love it. Um, it is Star Wars for grownups. Uh, because there are some instances where uh, kids will be wondering, why is that? You'll see. So anyway, this is Steph. I'll see you around the galaxy. Be good, stay calm. Don't protest, don't loot. Don't burn black people's houses up. And don't be stupid. And don't think people are 
racist because they're white or they suppose co or they support cops. Cause that's just fucking stupid. See you on the galaxy.